one main thing I would say, and mm-hmm. the basis of all that I'm saying here is that we have to begin to ask questions, be more curious, mm-hmm. stop being solutions oriented. And, and so, you know, there's this saying, which is strong opinions held loosely. All that is, is curiosity over conclusions. Yo, Carl, what's up, buddy? Sean, how you been, man? Happy Friday, happy Friday. Happy Friday, happy Friday. Um, how's, how's your week been, man? <laughs> uh, it's bittersweet, man. At first, I was excited. The kids are to school, and I'm just like, oh, I can't wait to get them to school. They're gone, and it's quiet, and it's me and my wife, and then we're just working, and then the house is quiet again. <laughs> so I don't know. It's it's cool, but it's also just like, wow, it's, it's just quiet after, like, I think, what, almost two years. So yeah. it's kind of odd. Yeah. <laughs> I hear that. Yeah, we just put our son this morning on the bus. Um, he's in school this year, senior kindergarten. Um, so yeah, definitely. I hear. I hear what you're saying. It's nice to have the quiet time in the day um, as they go through that experience. So yeah, man, that's wicked. Yeah. Um, and uh, wanted to, you know, take a minute and just again say hello to our to our audience out there. Happy Friday, everybody. I hope everyone is doing fantastic. Um, Thanks again for joining a brand new episode of As Is To Be. I am your co-host, uh, Sean, Sean Achimpong. I'm also your co-host, Carl Reed, but go by Creed. Right on. And you know how we do. We love transformation. We love hearing people's stories. We love looking at transformation unplugged and um, exploring the many talents of, of uh, people and guests and uh, people from around the world. And so without further ado, we have an amazing guest today to, to, to introduce to you. Um, we'd like to introduce you to Paul Singh. Paul, how you doing, man? Thanks for joining. Hey, guys. What's up? What up? Oh, listen to that strong <laughs> voice. Listen to that. Oh, this is a speaker set up, <laughs> that bike in the background, the beautiful color. Look, this guy's ready. He came to play. Sean. He's ready to rumble. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just like to be humble with my setup just you know <laughs> basics only <laughs> you know truth be told that's how i found discovered you on your youtube i loved your breakdown of your setup like how you use it for work uh how it's practical i like how you shaved your beard but it looks like you've grown it back so you're up a different different level and the bikes looks amazing really yeah cool. i think the <laughs> I think the uh, making the YouTube video was justification for spending all that money on this setup. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. <laughs> so for our audience out there, I wanted to take a minute to, to tell you a little bit about Paul. Um, yeah, he has an extensive background, which we're going to have some fun today. So uh, Paul is actually a creative director focused on sales, and he's helped win over a billion dollar in business. Um, he runs his his very own brand and design agency in India, and he's worked with airlines, sports teams, clothing, hotels, you name it. And he's also been awarded the top 30 under 30 by Hindustan Times, which is the, the national paper. Um, in addition to that, he's also written for GQ. He's orchestrated and co-founded music festivals. And he currently lives in Toronto, and he's an avid biker. So thanks again for joining us today, Paul. Glad to be here, guys. Um, I'm humbled. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, like I told, like I mentioned, I saw you on YouTube. That's where I first got some of your your content. But your background, your story, I know you shared it on YouTube. But if you wouldn't mind giving us some, uh, just some humble beginnings, because I loved your story of uh, your childhood in school and then transitioning into your current love uh, right now and want to unpack that uh, how you transition to different roles and different jobs I want to hear that as well so but let's start with um, just give us some background how did you realize you want to get into agency and and, and maybe unpack it for us a little bit um there's actually a few things first is I was really bad at studies really bad like I was thrown out of five different schools wow! like and escorted out of a specific high school by a principal. So I had a really bad uh, experience with schools and education and teachers and a 
authority and following any rules. I would be in class just doodling and sketching. Mm. And my parents felt that, uh, you know, and their typical Asian parents were like, well, he's not going to be an engineer. So there goes our dreams out the window. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> and, but they did see that I was talented at sketching, drawing, and had the more artistic side. And only when I got into college, my parents were like, you know what? Just do whatever you want. So I got into mm -hmm. arts college. I got thrown out of arts college because, again, I have a problem with authority and following rules. Um, and then after college, I met with this person at a wedding who used to run a PR firm. And he was actually retired from a, uh, an international PR firm. And he was like the senior executive. He used to be like flying chartered flights uh, to meet clients. And he was like a big shot. So I met him at a wedding and he's like, he told me about advertising and marketing. And I'm like, oh my God, that's literally, it was so exciting and interesting to me. And he just got me hooked. And then I was like, can I just come over to your place and hang out with you? <laughs> so I actually <laughs> went to his place, had tea and he used to call it Jai. Uh, he's no more. He actually passed away two, three months oh. ago. Oh, okay. But <clears throat> he's been the, one of the biggest influence and mentors to me. But so he gave me the ins and outs and the, you know, the birds and the bees of advertising and marketing. And from there, I actually got into this whole world of advertising and exposed to it. And once I went into my first advertising agency office, I was just like, this is home. Yeah. So that's like a, in a nutshell uh, with the, how it got into this uh, space. And <laughs> I, no, no, that's amazing because the fact that one, I like the fact that you, well, I'm not sure if I like the fact, but you called out that you realized there is a gap that from a school education perspective, the things that you're studying, there was no interest um, and your mind wouldn't focus and, and gravitate to that style of guess of learning. But then you, the, the second thing I thought was, was amazing is the support from your parents to recognize, okay, maybe there's something else that uh, could interest you. And then lastly, you found that mentor that said yes for you to come over. <laughs> Cause if he said no, he might've like, okay, well, I guess that, that stops that. But I want to understand, what was the interest? Like you said you doodled, but what was it that was the, I guess, the, what was sexy about it that, that piqued your interest as soon as you heard about it and you talked about it? Was there any things that people also can relate to say, oh yeah, I feel the same way? Yeah. Um, so I would break that down into a couple of things. Number one is um, I have like this whole theory on like education and learning at that in India and primarily the education system was that we have now is like was designed for the industrial revolution where we were just feeding into like an assembly line of engineers and all that stuff so the practice of just having kids like memorize stuff and just spit it and vomit it out like that did not turn my brain on at all there's right. no curiosity no questioning it was just memorizing and rote learning so that was a complete turn off and i was like that's not for me so i just said hard stop no I didn't even attempt to write anything in my exams. I would just get a zero. Like people would have fear that, oh, you know what? I should at least study a little bit. I didn't even bother to do any of that. Uh, so I had, my parents had a very tough time with me during my early years. Um, and yeah, then yeah, I <clears throat> as I was sketching and drawing, I, uh, I would be, I would find myself in, in those, back in those days, by the way, and were it from that generation. We used to have print newspapers and we don't right. no longer have print but back then and my dad's a journalist so we would get every single newspaper at our place because my dad would read and scan everything so i would find myself staring and looking at ads more than reading the articles and but at the time i didn't know what that was i was just like oh it's an ad like i didn't know like who made it or what the whole story behind it i was just fascinated by how ads were made and india is like very innovative when it comes to advertising especially because of the such a huge diversity of people, mindsets, cultures, languages. So there's a they push the boundaries quite a bit mm -hmm. versus North America, which is more homogenous in its, you know, the way they approach. It's like mostly centered on like football, sports, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so that's sort of where those early uh, flavors of, you know, my passion, I, I would lean towards those ads. I would like focus on how logos were made, how packaging would come, you know, if I and at the time we weren't that well off so you know if somebody some 
relative came from abroad to India, they would bring us like chocolates and I would really examine the packaging and how it was so much, pre- it was so premium, like even the matchboxes. So I was so fascinated by all of these things around me. And I was just gen- generally very curious. I would like disassemble my dad's scooter, the car, which got me into a lot of trouble. Because <laughs> you can't put that stuff back, back together. together again. Right. <laughs> Imagine my dad walks home one day and his brand new scooter, I've completely dissembled it oh just to see what's inside. And so he, he had like an LML Vespa. So oh, we had to okay. actually call a mechanic and he had to, you know, come and take all the parts in a, in a cart and then go assemble it and bring it the scooter back. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You have a loving, you so, have loving parents. <laughs> yeah, very, very, very supportive parents. Yeah. I would, I would not get, i get like a minor hand slap for <laughs> doing these things. So yeah, so in my early childhood, I was very curious with technology, hardware, and doing stuff with my hands. And uh, and then when I met in that, in, uh, and I would constantly be doing artistic things. Like back then, I I would make uh, music albums and sell them to my friends, make cover art you know, hand paint t-shirts, you know, make merch. Uh, so my friends would just pay me and be like, dude, could you make me uh, a really cool hoodie and, you know, paint something cool, whatever you want. I'm like, okay. So that's, those are like my very early uh, days of just seeing how I could convert my talent into commerce and make money from it, that people actually valued my art. And uh, so so that kind of just reinforced, oh, this is actually something that I can actually pursue. And this would actually pay me and help me live sort of, you know, uh, a decent lifestyle, hopefully one day. Mm. Huh. Yeah. So those are like basically like those very early, uh, again, I'm just saying like giving you like different things that were happening simultaneously yeah. uh, that led to uh, that conversation with uh, the guy from this PR firm. I, I see a lot of creative in you, um, almost in your blood, in your bones, like deep in your soul, you know, <laughs> um, that kind of uh, just lends to a natural curiosity of how things work and design. And um, that that is because I don't have it, I admire it in, in you. So I, I think that's really, really cool. Um, I'm intrigued now because it seems like it's it's been ingrained and part of you from such a young age all the way to your successes now um and now to having an international presence and being support um, supporting organizations across industries i'm how were you able to take this intrinsic uh curiosity so to speak and extend your brand and design you know beyond industries and beyond borders even um yeah so <clears throat> so just a quick um, I think just to make sure that, you know, I ha- we have the facts correct. So I used to run an agency, but I left, when I left India, I left the agency as well. Mm-hmm. But my partner's continuing to run that agency back home in India. Mm-hmm. Uh, and essentially, again, I ha- I, I've always had problem with authority and, you know, fitting into some sort of a mold. And when I, I basically did post-grad in marketing advertising in Mumbai. And after that, I was trying to look for a job. I couldn't find a job. And I was like, you know what, screw this. I'll just start my own agency. And at the time, people would tell me that, well, oh, I'm not creative. They're like, you're more a pro- more apt for account management, but creative is not your, I'm like, really? And so I was like, I'm not going to pay attention to what you're telling me. I'm just going to do what I want to do. And that kind of got me to starting my own agency from where I started from the basement of my house. And slowly and slowly, we built it up to uh 12 to 15 employees and we had interns and we would do all kinds of work uh from not only doing client given like work from clients like you know if there's like a hotel restaurant from a hospitality industry or textiles or airlines or sports teams or or even create our own ip like music festivals so we've done jazz festivals we've done indie music festivals and we would just do them uh from more from like a creation perspective versus somebody asking us to do something. Mm. And again, it was just out of curiosity and just for fun. And we wanted to explore what we could do and push the boundaries. And, uh, 
not waiting for somebody to give us the permission or somebody to give us a brief. It was just like, you know, let's self-initiate some of these projects. So they sort of took off. That's sort of like, again, the more high level of is what was happening. Um, and then at the time, I, even though I was an art person, I was always sketching, drawing. I, my dad's a journalist. So I, I would always find myself interested in how the copy and the ads were written, you know, so the text and how that there was like this whole concept of Mad Men era of long copy ads. And then you would have like a lot of text, no images. So those are really, that was like a really fascinating period. And I'll share some of that uh, content with you guys, which you can, this famous uh, copywriter called Neil French. And I'm a big fan of his work. Just like it's really long copy ads. They're beautiful. They're so un they're so hard not to read all the way to the end. They're so well written. And um, so I would find myself writing and I started writing some blogs and I got discovered by GQ. And they're like, we really like the kind of stuff that you write. Could you write for us? And I'm like, sure. So again, I was just exposed by content that I was producing. Just like this podcast. You guys just kind of saw what I was doing and you thought, oh, this seems kind of cool. And I got invited to do this cool thing. <laughs> <laughs> the coolest thing you've ever done so far, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is definitely one of those up there, the highlight reel. <laughs> right, right. So now taking that to today. Um, so you're here, Toronto. I, I've heard the story about you locating and looking for work and then uh, what you do now. Do you want to just describe that to the audience? Because I think it's 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 a learning lesson. And as well as you gave some tips, uh, you gave some really yeah. good sound bites on you, how you do what you do. And then um, we want to learn more about now that you're in part of this agency, how do you get clients and, and things like that? Can you walk us through that? Right. So what happens is anytime somebody moves to Canada, the first thing, you know, if you want to get a job, if you want, unless you go down like a path of, you know, doing your own thing, if you want to get a job, every single company that you apply to will be like, do you have Canadian experience? Hmm. Yeah. And that is, you know, how do you get Canadian experience if you don't have a job? So that's a bit of a bit of a catch 22. Um, so when I moved here, I did some small freelance projects. Uh, and then what happened is that when I wanted like a more serious role, full-time role that could help, actually help me pay my bills also, because I was broke, completely broke when I moved here. Uh, I don't want to get into like the whole, like how I suck at finances and stuff. <laughs> Just blew money <laughs> at parties, cars. <laughs> Next interview. Traveling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, so when I moved here, I was I was basically broke, and I had to start from scratch. So I had all this experience in my in my in my belt under you know running my own agency, fifteen people, fifteen person team, to working with the top tier clients in India from airlines, sports teams, music festivals, all that stuff. And I thought when I moved here, I thought you know with my experience, I should easily get a creative director job, like at the least, right? But when I applied, I was surprised that nobody would even revert to my emails or respond. I would just simply get, you've been rejected. I was like, okay. So what I did, I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe I need to do sort of a numbers game. So I put together, I used my skills basically. I I, uh, I put together an e two, three email templates. And I sat down on a weekend, uh, had some wine and... <laughs> <laughs> Put, put together a script, all the data of all the, the, the creative leaders in agencies, their emails and the emails of uh, industry people. And I've had a list of about 2,200 people. And I sent out that email template campaign uh, to all these people. And within a week, I had 10 job interviews. And here, behold, I had the first job. And I started off as a senior designer. Now I'm a creative director. Wow. That's in, in, in very condensed form <laughs> what happened, but yeah. The power of uh, good copy, really. To, to <laughs> yeah, and, and what would happen is that, yeah. absolutely. And what would happen is that um, once people start working with me and see what I can do, mm -hmm. then they totally get it. Uh, it's, it's also because it's hard. When you're hiring for a, a role, this is another 
it's not got to do with me specifically, but this is just how the industry works, is that when you're trying to get a, apply for a job, it's not about you. It's You have to think about when you're applying for a job, what is going on? What are the motions that the person who's trying to hire you, what are they going through? Mm-hmm. So they have a, they need to fulfill a certain skill set. They're missing that skill set in their team, right? And they want to fulfill that. So now if they see a resume where this person can do a whole bunch of things, either that's too good to be true and all of it is false. It's like, well, I can speak Portuguese, Spanish, French. I'm sure you've seen those memes. But at the time when you actually, uh, so, so when that hiring person is looking at the resume, they want to see, oh, does they want to make a safe decision. They want to take the least amount of risk, right? And when they see a resume, they see, okay, oh, this person can do, this kind of person can make a postcard, this kind of person can make a poster. That's exactly what we're looking for, right? Versus this person can do a whole bunch of stuff. So that seems a little bit risky. They're like, well, this seems exactly what we're looking for. So they'll go lean towards that. So hmm. essentially what you want to do is when you're trying to apply for a job, you want to become the most least risky option and the most safest option. And that's that increases your chance of getting hired to like 90%. 95% versus saying, oh, I can just do everything, um, which you, even if you can, you should not say that if you're applying for a job. <laughs> yeah, you want to avoid saying more and just really like remove all the stuff that you can do and just focus on and focus on the motions that the hiring person and the person who's going to be reading your resume going through. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. so today, do, is it um, <clears throat> you obtain new business by way of um, referral, or do you still um, send out copy to uh, like in large campaigns or email blasts to people, <clears throat> or what? How do you flow now these days after that initial? Right. So, so now that I I work in a full time role with an agency, uh, I actually am a cons- I work as a consultant with a very large professional services firm, which they have offices across the globe. And I basically work as part of, and I apply all the skills that I've learned in graphic design, branding, advertising, marketing, user experience design, design thinking, all of that stuff that I've learned, storytelling, copywriting, everything that you can think of. I apply it in a very niche area, which is just sales and thinking about, you know, how do you take, how do you uh, go from a cold, lead uh or how do you build those conversations to a warm lead to or if it's a warm if it's already a warm lead <clears throat> and how do you build that relationship to actually winning that business and what does that look like in the rfp process how do you design proposals how do you design uh those conversations that lead to winning the business and these deals are like 30 million 50 million 100 million that's the, the worth of these deals that I work on. Wow. And so it's basically bringing design thinking and design and creativity to the sales process. Can can I understand <laughs> more of those tactics? I'm asking Ooh. for a friend. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you know, you, you, you share some tactics online on your channel. I love how you review tweets, which is pretty awesome. You review some, yeah. some books and you call up tactics there. Off camera, yeah. you're talking about that you ride your bike to get ideas. And I've also heard that you like to uh, store ideas in certain manners. Is there ways that you can are tools, maybe two or three that you can share with me. I won't tell anyone <laughs> that, that helps you with your agency in your current world. Like anything that you, you now rely on quite a bit that you use quite often. Right. <clears throat> so, so I, because I come from like a more, you could call it, and this is how sort of designers and this industry sort of buckets people is I, I would, I would call myself more of like that from the traditional side of like coming from advertising marketing, like that mad man style hmm. era of that's kind of where I started off my journey as a tr- traditional graphic design artist and writer and all that stuff. And uh, going in from there to becoming more like an entrepreneur and understanding how the CEO thinks. So if you want to be as a designer and as somebody who wants to be really good at sales is you want to think about everything that you have to offer. So let's say if you are a designer, you're a motion designer, you're a writer, whoever you are, and uh, or you have a product, whatever that is. 
and you want to sell it to someone, you want to give your service to someone, you want to think about how is that thing relevant to that person? Is it even relevant to that person? Um, and what would they value? So that's like the, the, the top layer that, that you would probably hear from everyone. So what we try to do is go a little bit deeper than that. We say, okay, firstly, selling, this whole idea of selling is so many negative connotations around selling. Mm-hmm. And people see, oh, I'm, I'm an actually a scientist. I'm not a salesperson or I am a designer. I'm not a salesperson or, you know, I make really cool, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, music. I'm a, I'm a, uh, uh, but I'm not a salesperson, but it, ultimately you have to find the commerce meets creativity. Cause if in the absence of one, you know, you really don't have, uh, any, any product, uh, <clears throat> so what we typically do is we, we, I specifically work with subject matter experts who are really smart at what they do. They could be engineers, data scientists, uh, people who are really good at like human resource transformations, all kinds of like really complex art solution architecture mm-hmm. and software based, hardware based, you know, and these are like large scale transformations. And I'd say, okay, so, you know, you have all this complex knowledge and understanding and you're passionate about what you do. But how can you communicate all this complexity to somebody who doesn't understand this taxonomy? You know, they're like, yeah. I just want to solve my problem. I have a ache here and you come in and say all these fancy words, they're going to be lost. They're like, but how does this fix my, this ache that I have? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so the, there's a client's looking for, let's say, for example, the client's looking for how do I increase my sales? You know, how do I get more people to walk into my coffee shop? One client could be, you know, how do I sell more tickets to my music festival? Right. Another person could be, you know, how do I get my employees to feel a certain way about my company? A perception problem. Right. So, and if you say, oh, I can just make some posters for you. You're like, you're not connecting the dots for them. So, so the one main thing I would say, and the basis of all that I'm saying here is that we have to begin to ask questions, be more curious, stop being solutions oriented. And, and so, you know, there's this saying which is strong opinions held loosely all that is is curiosity over conclusions so if you think about it is held loosely is the is the curiosity and strong opinions is the conclusions and if you're constantly having conversations with clients just be curious longer just ask more questions because once you get to the the root cause of what's what's hurting them what are they really trying to do then you can start building a solution in collaboration with them on that. Um, and that's like, it's so simple in its approach, but 99.9% of people just don't do it. Mm-hmm. That is the main difference is when you go in to a conversation, if you're a graphic designer and uh, you're a writer, you have a, a really complex software solution, whatever that thing is, you go and sit in front of the, the prospective buyer and you know, you're talking to them all your, in your mind, there could be two things happening. You could be thinking curious. Okay. Let me ask why, tell me more. Or you could be like, how is this going to fit into what I do? You know, and that's the difference in your brain. What's the conversation that's happening? Either you're thinking, how does this fit into a poster? You know, cause that's typically how even agency people become, you know, because they think, oh, well, we only do, you know, videos and we only do print. And how can we solve this problem with video and print versus saying, you know, this client has a very complex e-commerce problem. It's actually going to be solved by banner ads, for example, right? That would be the solution. So people are driven by what their limited capabilities are versus what the client actually needs or versus what the buyer actually needs. So it's like, you you go to a doctor and the doctor's like, well, I'm not a dentist. So how can I solve this tooth problem, even though I'm a cardiologist, right? right? So people are so limited in like, they have blinders on, they think more from the lens of what they can do and what their capabilities are versus what the client and the buyer actually needs. So it's actually thinking, not selling, but helping. Man, so that's a big mindset shift. It's so simple. It's, this is not rocket science, but this is literally the difference between somebody who makes $15 an hour, $5 an hour to somebody who makes 
a thousand dollars an hour. Hmm. I uh, I feel like you just put ten thousand dollars in our pockets, man. Would you just that balance there? I'm, I'm the real. I'm the real man. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that is that is some deep profound knowledge i is as actually causing me to to rethink my approach on the user the customer or the potential customer yeah um i have a question for you though uh and this is going back you know to our days as kids running around um could grown up extremely knowledgeable and experienced paul if there's a message you could share with young Paul running around, uh, what would you say to that person? I would say keep being more curious and don't worry about asking for permission mm -hmm. and don't worry about like getting any grades, good grades. Like don't worry about school and education, you know, unless you want to be like an engineer and or go to space and do all that stuff, you might need to have some formal education if you want to be a doctor. But for anything else, you can just learn on your own, go at your own pace, and don't worry about any of that other stuff. And you'll be fine. Wow. That's what I would say. That, now, what would you say? That, that's awesome, by the way. Uh, thank you for that. What would you say to your future self now? Like, what's the next step for you? My future self is... So the thing is, I this is a bit of a thing that I'm constantly self-reflecting and introspecting on these days. Is that there's a lot of things that I wanted to achieve when I was a when I was in college, when I was a kid, you know, that I wanted to have my own agency one day. Do we be, not have an agency to, to be specific, but to be doing my own thing, be successful at it, be known by you know people around me, by peers, by my friends, you know, that I'm successful in what I'm doing, and to achieve certain things, I had certain muscles. So I did all of that. So now I have to kind of re figure out what's my new North star. And so I haven't figured that out. So I'm like, I'm just on this beautiful journey because I, all the things that I had in my mind, I sort of achieved. And now it's like, I'm trying to push myself and sort of push myself and challenge myself in different directions. Uh, and so I'm still trying to figure out what my new North star has to be. Hmm. So yeah, so I'm uh, working on that right now. <laughs> I don't have an answer to be honest. So how can that's man that's cool man i uh yeah i'm intrigued to follow your story and continue following it and um now i'm wondering how people can follow you you know and uh, and learn more and more about your journey um so i basically make uh tiktok videos and youtube videos but everywhere my social handle is paul singh p-a-u-l-s-y-n-g and it's the only name that exists on earth and mm -hmm. um so if you put in Paul Singh into Google, I'm the only person that will come up. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's, so, opposite. that's opposite than me. I have to say Creed because there's so many Carl Reeds. So that's amazing. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So if you basically put in Paul Singh, you'll see a whole litter of stuff that I've done uh, from Twitter to YouTube. But I'm most active on uh, Twitter and YouTube. When you... When you get to that point where you, that true North Star, you're, I'm assuming you're going on your bike ride and, and you hit that North Star, star, excuse me, and you realize, okay, I'm at this stage. I realize what I'm going to do now. Can you hit us up so we can talk to you then and, and talk and follow you on your journey and hear you and come back on, on our, our podcast? Can we hear more about this? <laughs> I'm so humbled that, uh, that you would want to be part of that conversation. But yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I would love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I want to know. I now yeah. I want to know when you hit your hit this stage. You're like, okay, I got another North Star. Let me talk about it. I want to hear about it. Absolutely. Thank you so yeah. much for coming on our show. I really uh, appreciate it. This was a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully, you know uh, the people listening got some value out of it. And, uh, and if anybody wants to know more, you can always hit me up, and I can go deeper into any specific, you know, question challenge that you might be having. And happy to answer those. Right on. Cool, man. Okay, it's cool. Yeah. So definitely appreciate it, Paul. It's been it's been awesome getting a chance to learn more about you and everything. Um, and uh, Carl, of course, you know, it's been a peach brother. Been yeah, you cool too, man. Always. Good yeah, to chat man. to you. You too. And uh, for our audience out there, you know, we just want to say again, stay cool, everybody. And, you know, 
Remember, you can live your life as is, or you can chase a dream of where you want your future to be. Peace. Peace.